on this very holy day. We remember that Jesus, on the night before his own death on a cross, shared a memorial meal with his beloved disciples. And the Gospel of Matthew records that event with these words. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the, the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, so that their sins may be forgiven. I tell you, I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way with you in my Father's kingdom. Then, after singing songs of praise... They went to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Tony Campolo, I've shared with you some of his stories before. Tony is a sociologist, preacher, writer of many different books, and the Dossie Sunday School class has been reading one of his most recent books. Well, in one of those books, he tells a story about a man named Joe. Joe had been a drunk most of his life, but somehow he was miraculously recovered from that life of alcoholism as he attended services at a Bowery mission. Now, prior to his conversion, he had gained a reputation in that community as being a dirty wino for whom there was no hope whatsoever. People felt like he would just live out a miserable existence in the ghetto. But following his conversion, his acceptance of Christ into his life, he became really, truly a new creation, as the Apostle Paul tells us will happen. Everything in his life changed. He became the most caring person, and he wanted to hang out at that mission every single day to touch the life of others. He spent days and nights hanging out in that mission, doing whatever anyone asked him to do. No task was too menial or below him to do whether it was cleaning up vomit left by some other alcoholic who became sick or scrubbing toilets from the men who wouldn't clean up after themselves. He would do any job with a smile and a song in his heart and seeming gratitude for the chance to help out. He could be counted on to feed the feeble men in that mission who had difficulty picking up a fork without shaking and feeding themselves. He could be counted on to tuck men into bed at night. He could be counted on to take care of serving the needs of all those who could not take care of themselves. Well, one evening, the director of the mission was giving his nightly speech to a group of men who had gathered in that mission, and most of them were like Joe had been. They were dealing with alcoholism or drug addictions. Many of them were homeless and wandering on the streets, and they were just grateful to be in a warm building that night. They didn't care much for what the director had to say that night, so most of them were kind of drooped over, falling asleep in their seats as the director went on with his speech. But there was one man who perked up at the end of the director's speech, and he walked down the aisle to the front of that little chapel, and he cried out as he knelt on his knees. He cried out, Oh God, oh God, make me like Joe, make me like Joe, make me like Joe. The director of the mission walked over to him and put his hand on his shoulder and he said, 
I think it'd be better if you said, Lord, make me like Jesus. And the old man looked up and he said, Is Jesus like Joe? <laughs> For you see, that old drunk that had been converted, that Joe had showed the light of Jesus to this man had showed love and compare and compassion, had showed all of those qualities that Jesus came to teach us. A bishop of Sweden once said that saints are those who make it easier for us to believe in God. Exactly what Melanie told our children today. People who make it easier for us to believe in God when they live by faith and when they show that they care for others and help others to see the things that Christ wanted all of us to see, they are saints among us. When we do those things, we are rightly called the saints of God. And isn't that what our calling is as followers of Christ? We are called to make disciples of Jesus Christ by living lives that help people see Christ so that they want to follow Christ themselves, by helping people to see the one who came and lived and rose again to give us a new life filled with love and joy and peace and hope. As I stand before you today, and look out at so many faces that have touched my life with the love of Christ, I stand here with a grateful heart. Many of you know that in April of this year, my older sister passed away. And so at 8.30 today, I went to my sister's church, my former congregation, Trenum Road United Methodist, as they lit a candle in Debbie's memory. The pain that we all feel when our loved ones are no longer with us is real. But on this All Saints Sunday, we are called to give thanks for the fact that they loved us and lived among us and touched us with light and caring and compassion and helped us to see God's grace at work in this world. Many of you are also aware that my mother turned 93 years old this week, but she celebrated her birthday in the hospital as she has fractured her back and is dealing with something called C. diff. But again, members of this beautiful congregation helped me to see the light of Christ and feel the love of God as you showed how saintly you are. One of the most caring ways that we can express God's love and compassion to one another is by sharing meals with each other. And we have a wonderful ministry in this church called Gracious Goodness. Gracious goodness is food for the body, but it, I'm telling you today, it is also food for the soul. Food is not just something physical and tangible. Food actually brings us together as people. And if you have never noticed it before, the scriptures are filled with references to food and when God wants us to remember something, God calls together a feast and says, when you see this food, remember my love, remember my grace, remember my power. If you look in the Old Testament, one of the most powerful images of God's saving grace at work is the Passover meal as the children were led out of slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land, 
they ate that Passover meal, reminding them that God would be with them and God would protect them and lead them into a place of promise and hope and new beginnings. And on the night before Jesus died, he gave to us this wonderful meal that we celebrate, that we call the Eucharist, a meal of thanksgiving, communion, a meal to be shared in community with one another. For Jesus understood what sometimes we are slow, so slow in understanding, is that food and meal times are times that bind us together as people. This past week, I wanted to make sure I was in my mom's hospital room every time a meal was delivered because she doesn't want to eat anything. And with the onset of dementia, I'm afraid she might forget how to eat. So I wanted to be there to feed her. And her recurring statement to me was, I'm so sorry I'm such trouble. I'm so sorry I'm such trouble. And my mind immediately went to all the times she fed me as a child. And I thought, what loving and caring things we do for others when we feed them when we feed them. And that slow pace of it taking her so long to get through a meal reminded me that sharing meals with others is a lost art in our world today. We don't take the time to actually sit down at tables and share meals with others like they did in years gone by. I read a study not long ago that said 20 years ago, people would spend an hour or more at the dinner table at night. Now people spend at most 12 minutes together eating dinner because we eat on the run. Have you heard of dashboard dining? How many of you do dashboard dining? You know what that is, right? You go through the drive through and you eat in your car on the run. And we're missing something by doing that, my friends. We're missing the table fellowship that binds us together when we share that meal. For when those meals are shared with others, we slow down our pace and we share life's stories together. We share in that fellowship with one another. Jesus understood this because as you read through the Gospels, you will be amazed at how many times Jesus' teachings revolved around meal times, where he sat with people and shared with them. You remember, of course, when he was at the wedding in Cana of Galilee and turned the water into wine? You remember the time that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and Jesus said, I'm coming to your house to eat dinner. You remember how Jesus was accused of eating with sinners and being a glutton and a drunkard because he enjoyed those times of meal and fellowship with others. And in the Gospel of Luke, we read that Jesus himself declares to the people that he came eating and drinking. He came so that we might slow down our lives and share our lives with one another around the good food that God has provided for us. You see, in some ways, I believe that food is God's language of love. Does that sound odd? that food is God's language of love. But think about it. We have 10,000 taste buds on our tongue. Why would we have so many taste buds on our tongue and such a wide variety of food in this world if God didn't love us so much that God wants us to enjoy that time and savor that time together as we share meals with one another? 
in the sharing of the meal, we are called to do what Jesus did, to bless the bread that is broken, recognizing that it is a blessed and sacred time at the table, recognizing that it is by God's goodness that we are touched by the lives of others and by God's grace. We are to recognize the brokenness in our world that Christ came to redeem. And we are called to give, to give ourselves in love as Christ has given himself in love to others. As I thought about this beautiful meal that we share, I thought about how many years ago, when I was an associate at Trinity Road Methodist Church, I recognized that there were many people who lived alone and that meal time when you're grieving is one of the hardest times there is. To sit at a table and to miss the people who are not at that table any longer. And it became more and more important to me to share the communion meal with persons who are lonely, with persons who are grieving, with persons who need to be reminded that they are included at the table and that there is a communion of saints unseen all around us. To remember that there is that thin space when we are gathered in Christ's name, when we can be touched by God's love and God's grace. Some of you have volunteered to help us do that with our homebound and lonely people in this community. And Adrian Fink, our wonderful deacon, is going to be leading that ministry for us starting in January. It is a blessed time to share in this holy meal with others touching people with God's grace, remembering how Jesus took that bread and he transformed that Passover meal into a meal that reminds us of God's love and grace for all people. A meal that reminds us of a new beginning when he took the cup and he used the word saying, this is my cup of the new covenant, a new beginning. Remember the past and the grace that has seen you through. Remember the lives of the saints who have touched your life with love and grace. And drink of the cup of the new covenant to begin your life following in the path of the saints who have gone before you. May we have the grace, the faith, and the love to so live. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.